Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to today's GNET presentation entitled Leveraging SharePoint as Strategic Platform for Forms and Workflows. Without further delay, I'm pleased to hand the floor over to Anand Pandia from GNET Group. Pan Anand, you have the floor. Thank you, Marcy. Uh, I'd also like to thank everyone for attending the webcast today. Hoping you get a lot out of our topic and you can walk into your holiday weekend and new year with some new things to think about. Um, just a little bit of overview of what we're going to be talking about today. I want to introduce GNET Group and introduce ourselves. We'll get into talking about today's business environment. I want to talk about some commonplace business processes in your organizations and those processes, uh, how they should be streamlined and should empower workers rather than burying people in paperwork and email. From there, we want to take a look at Microsoft's application platform, specifically SharePoint, and how you can use its capabilities to cut through some of that red tape and minutia. We want to get into talking about automated forms and workflow solutions and how they can enable business-ready solutions. We want to do a small demo geared more towards the IT and developer folks in our, in our audience today, showing them how easy it is to piece together a development of a form and a workflow. We want to talk about a, uh, a business solution that GNET has created, specifically our planning and budgeting solution, which is an end-to-end -end planning, budgeting, forecasting package that's been built on the Microsoft platform, and it solves one of the most common, frustrating, and pretty much uh, time-taking processes at, at most organizations. Throughout the presentation, we want you guys to ask questions via the live meeting console, as Marcy alluded to. We want to address some of the shorter questions as quickly as we can, but we will dedicate some time towards the end for Q&A. Um, the second demo we'll be doing is going to be on our planning and budgeting solution, and that's going to be more towards our business-centric folks. We want to show the practical application of the Microsoft application platform. I want to introduce myself. My name is Anand Pandya. I'm the service manager for GNET Group in our South Central District involved in guiding and architecting our projects in the south as well as working with the folks up north on our internal projects and constant development. Our other speaker today is Chaitanya Kalitkar, who you'll hear from in a few minutes. Chaitanya is GNET Group's senior SharePoint architect, and as like we, we like to call him our all-around miracle worker. A little about, about, oh, sorry, forgot we had a poll. So we want to get a feel for who's in our audience today, and uh, we want to take a look at your current role in your company. So if you could take a moment, click the radio button that best corresponds to your role. You have finance, sales and marketing, IT, executive management, other. Or if you'd like to abstain, hey, that's your right. Take a little bit of time here. Okay, I think that's pretty much everybody. So a little bit about GNET Group. GNET Group is a managed, gold-certified Microsoft partner focusing on empowering data-driven strategies. The way we see it, data is the lifeblood of any company in operation today. If you can't make sense of your data that your business processes are creating, you're most likely having a hard time operating against your strategy. Through our history, over 150 successful Microsoft business intelligence and SharePoint solutions, we've helped companies in multiple verticals turn their data from mere zeros and ones to actionable insight. We've been leveraged by Microsoft's Global Center of Excellence and are rec recognized as a thought leader and a leading provider of BI and SharePoint solutions. We're headquartered in St. Paul, Minnesota, and we have a local office in Dallas, Texas. GNET Group offers a core range of services across business intelligence and SharePoint. All our projects begin at the strategic level where we help our customers envision how they can better monitor and achieve their goals and objectives help establish data and content governance to start all our projects off on the right foot and ensure that the solutions we implement are used to the fullest rather than proverbially collecting dust on a shelf. We have three pre-built solutions to act as accelerators for business insight. For those of you in the healthcare field, our healthcare intelligence framework helps provider organizations better manage the balance of quality of care with the cost of providing it. Our digital marketing dashboard framework helps marketing departments in any organization of any size involved in digital marketing to better understand how effective their campaigns are and how to measure that oh-so-hard-to-measure return on marketing investment. And as we alluded to earlier, we offer an end-to-end -end planning budgeting solution, and we're going to get into a little bit more detail on that later in the hour. 
Enough about us, though. Let's talk about the topic at hand. You know, the topic of our webcast is really centered about leveraging SharePoint and automating forms and workflow. What that really means is we're talking about streamlining business processes. I want to take a moment and think about some of the processes you guys have in your organizations. You know, think about HR onboarding. How many forms did you fill out? How many forms have you had to prove when people came aboard under your team? Are they paper forms? Are they email forms? Think about some of that. We had some pretty heavy attendance from IT folks. Think about it from the processes you need to undertake when you want to make changes in a production system. Do you have a change control committee? Do you need to submit forms and code requests to do code reviews? How long does that process take? How manually intensive is that process? How smart is the workflow for approval queues? When I want to submit uh, a PTO request to my boss, how long does that process take if he's not in the office? Who gets that? Is the workflow smart enough? I mean, we could roll through example after example of just different ways that processes just um, are not streamlined and they're not efficient. And, you know, as we're going through that, you might even be thinking, all right, so what? You know, it's everybody's problem, and that's just kind of the cross to bear, and, you know, and I just... You know, you, you grin, you bear it, you put your head down, and, and you get through the process. And, you know, it's a fair point. But if you actually sit and think about some of the pains that inefficient processes cause, it's kind of mind-blowing. You know, how much time is wasted filling out manual forms, you know, validating the data in those forms. You know, in the case of pen to paper, you know, transposing those forms into a, a system of some kind. Are they manual handoffs? Do you have a submission process? Is somebody taking a form that you fill out, taking it to somebody else's, you know, uh, office and just leaving it on their desk with a post-it note. You know, that's just the forms themselves. We talked about how data is the lifeblood of any organization. What about the quality of that data? You want it to be the best it could be. So the more inefficient a process, the, the higher the window is to have bad data. You know, how valid is that data of an inefficient manual process? Are we looking at duplicates? Are they fat finger errors from transposition? You know, it's that idea of, well, I, I guess this is right, and I don't want to stall the process, so I'll just put something down and hope it's right. You know, and when you do submit that, what kind of visibility do you have in the process? How many times has something stalled or bottlenecked, and it's impossible to find out why or where? You know, we like to call this the, yeah, uh, I'm checking on it, and uh, I'll get back to you principle. You know, how many times have forms just kind of gotten lost in the shuffle and gone to what I affectionately like to call form graveyard. I want to dive a little bit deeper into a specific example that we're going to go a little bit into further, and that's the planning and budgeting example. Now, most likely, a lot of you just wrapped up this process past month or so, walking into next year, and I'm, I'm hoping I'm not bringing up any bad memories. But um, when we're talking about planning and budgeting with our customers, mo most often we hear these terms like spread marks or Yes, we have a couple of Excel wizards or Excel Jedis, or our planning process is really just an Excel hell. And, and it's a way of customers telling us that right now all their planning and budgeting data is housed in this plethora of spreadsheets across people's inboxes, shared drives, desktops, and only one or two people really know how to make the data work together, what spreadsheets are valid, which has the right format, you know, what one of the proper variables I need to have in my VLOOKUP functionality. And from a workflow perspective, you know, how many times have you just set up a folder and a set of rules and outlook just for planning and budgeting? And it makes sense maybe from an organization perspective, but really when you get down to it, a lot of the times these rules are just, uh, I'm using that to get rid of clutter, and there's so much back and forth on version this, and this was edited by so-and-so and reviewed by another person, and this is the final copy followed by another email that says, I actually use this one. And um, inevitably people just say, I have a folder and rules to get rid of this stuff from my inbox, and I'm actually waiting for an email directly to me telling me to do something. So think about your own process. You know, Jack Welch has this, this famous quote about the budgeting process, and really what he's trying to say is that when planning and budgeting for the next year, that should really be one of the most exciting times for a company because you're planning about all the things you will be doing next year, all the great things your organization could be doing. But inevitably, the process is so disjointed, so 
time-consuming and cost-consuming that it sucks all that energy and time and fun and the dreams out of that. You know, it's inevitably uh, this is based on assumptions that were wrong. I don't really have a lot of insight. I have to run 20 different reports to get somewhere. You know, I have this, you know, queue that I run through, and I just kind of check things off because, oh, goodness, planning and budgeting, here we go again. And this is one of the classic examples of a process in every organization has to go through that is inevitably suffering because inefficient forms and the workflow itself. But, you know, we don't want to dwell too much on the negative. So let's talk about the solutions. And I want to bring in Chaitanya to tell more about Microsoft SharePoint and the Microsoft application platform and how it can really solve some of these problems. So, Chaitanya? Thanks, Anand, and good afternoon, everybody. I just wanted to go over this part of the SharePoint wheel, as I like to call it, and it shows us uh, a bunch of options and a bunch of features that SharePoint Server offers as an application platform. Now, what you see is um, sites, communities, content, insights, composites, and a search that runs across all these areas. For the purposes of our demo, we are going to focus only on the composites part of it today. And specifically, oops, not the poll yet, and specifically the InfoPath forms and workflows. Now, these areas for the forms and the workflows is what Alan referred to in his earlier slide, and these are the pieces that would help do a single point of truth and an automated workflow process rather than having to use email as a workflow tool. Now, I wanted to do a quick poll uh, before we go any further and talk more about what the forms and the workflows do. So we'll switch to that real quick. Now, basically, this is just to understand what version of SharePoint everybody is working on. And while the poll is happening, I also wanted to point out that in your top left, uh, top right corner, you do have um, an icon that looks like three pages, which is basically uh, content you can download. We do have this presentation available for download. Okay, and it looks like there's quite a few people using SharePoint 2010 and 2007. Now, the SharePoint server itself is based on a, mic on a Microsoft application platform, which basically looks like this cube. And the whole point is all the data sits in this database layer, and all the users are right up here where you see the PC, phone, and the browser uh, right there. Now, the challenge is if there is data in the database layer and you have a user who is using the browser, you do need the application layer to be able to talk to the data. Now, this is served through the web interface using the SharePoint forms and workflows, which is based on the SharePoint server. I wanted to also take a minute to talk about what is it that the forms do. And I'm thinking a whole bunch of people here may have already worked with InfoPath forms, um, but I wanted to talk about the 2010 version of InfoPath. And what it is is basically two parts. So one is a designer, the other is a filler which lets you fill forms and design forms. And the designer itself can then be restricted to say, you know, not everybody can go and modify my form templates. The forms themselves are form templates, which then gets published to a SharePoint server. It also get pu gets published as a content type and then gets attached to a workflow. And we'll see that in a little bit when I get into the demo. Now, these InfoPath forms can get data from the SharePoint server using a direct connection, connection to SQL Server, or they could use web services, or you could use business connectivity services, or there could be any other web services that uh, anybody has chosen to write on their own. So without further delay, let's jump into the actual 